Hey, this is Luke. Welcome to Lower It Up Podcast. Powered by Basel D Magazine. We'll be interviewing local creators who work in and around the clock for the crop over season and beyond. Join us on this journey as we go behind the scenes of what makes crop over crop over. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 6 of the Lower Up Podcast, powered by Basil D. Magazine, recorded and produced by Robbie at Nameless Productions. On tonight's episode, we'll be having a melting pot of food, music, history, as well as some carnival. But first, we start with Elena Pinder. Communications Coordinator at the Barbados Museum. Elena dives deep with all the Barbadian history and gives us more information about the museum activities as well as their renowned Dapi Tour. We're going to take us all the way to the Food and Rum Festival, where Chef Seth Hassin Bromley is going to tell us all about his culinary exploits in Barbados. After we take in some Barbini history, stop with some food and rum, then we party. We go over to St. Andrew Carnival, the sweetest escape. Selena and Janelle King, both the PRO and the marketing agents of the St. Andrew Parish Committee, are going to give us a little taste of what they have to offer for St. Andrew Carnival. So stay tuned for that. After we wind down and walk up on Ermy Bourne Highway, we're going to take it cool and slow with Mark Ford as he gives us an insight of his album launch called My Island and Me. We hope you enjoy. Basidi. So this evening, we're here with Elena Pinder from the Barbados Museum and Historical Society. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Luke. How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm good too, thanks. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. So I want to talk this evening about the Dapi Tour, the Dapi Bus mm-hmm. Tour, as well as the other functions of the Barbados Museum and Historical Society and Just give people a refresher on it. Okay, so starting with the Duffy Tour, that is one of the most anticipated tours of the year hosted by the Barbados Museum. It was completely sold out when we did it in 2020. So Mm -hmm. now that COVID restrictions have been lifted, it was only natural for us to offer that again to persons. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know about the Duffy Tour, it is a night of unearthing mysteries and sharing Barbadian stories, folklore, and legends that are unique to Barbados. So it's all in spooky season type of thing. Yes, yeah. Yes. Obviously, <laughs> this is around, you know, the Halloween time. Right. We don't want to say it's a Halloween tour because right. it is not. Right. But it is just an opportunity to us to, you know, examine like mysteries and mm. myths and legends right. and stuff. That exists in that Barbadian exists, culture. Exactly. Right. Because, you know, we have all that type of spooky stuff going on. So it's like, it's the perfect time, you know. You mm-hmm. you really it would be weird to just pop out and announce it randomly throughout the year. So yes, it would be. <laughs> why not just ride on, you know, the Halloween coattail and like we you know we have our own mysterious stuff. We have exactly. our own legends, we have exactly. our own culture. Yeah. Yeah. And what actually makes this tour more exciting is the fact that these stories will be brought to life with dramatizations and reenactments by some talented Barbadian artists actors so we're working with actors we're working with tour guys it's it is a whole production it's not just a a regular bus right it's not just you driving here and somebody points and say oh that's that and you drive to another stop exactly it's a whole whole production that's nice that's good it is it is all right so we have three tours scheduled at the moment the first two dates are completely sold out and that is friday october 28th and saturday october 29th So we do actually have another tour, and that is on Saturday, November 5th. So persons who did not get an opportunity to sign up for the previous tours, you can join us on that date. And the buses depart from the Barbados Museum at 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m., and 8 p.m. sharp. And not beige in time. <laughs> <laughs> you know beige, that's for sure. Anytime I say, yes. where the bus go along? But unfortunately, if you come late, we are so sorry. But, you know, we're leaving on time. We have a tight schedule. So please, please, we are actually urging persons, if they can, to come at least 30 minutes before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you can come, um, sell in to the museum. You can actually have an opportunity 
to visit our ICH exhibition, mm -hmm. which is new at the museum. So you will come, you will see the exhibition, and then you get on the bus and head to your head to your road. tour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's brilliant stuff, actually. So they yeah. could get a touch of the museum before they go along. Mm -hmm. And so how do people get tickets for the tours? So you can contact the Barbados Museum at 538-0201 or send an email to info at barbmuse. So that's B-A-R-B-M-U-S-E dot org dot B-B. Just letting us know what time you would like to join the tour and also how many persons, because we have had persons call for just booking two tickets and some people have even booked as much as 10 tickets. Oh, so wow. just, you know, let yeah. us know how many persons you want um, to join you on the tour and we will be happily able to assist you. Okay. And for people who call, like, what's mm -hmm. your opening hours? Right. So we are open Monday to Saturday from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if during outside of those hours, if you want to contact us, just send us an email and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But and obviously the tickets are selling out quickly because obviously yes. like the 28th and the 29th sold they out already. They are completely sold out. Tickets are $75. Mm -hmm. And basically, unfortunately, that does not include food, mm -hmm. but oh, there's wow. going to be lots of entertainment, lots of stories lots of mysteries to be you know unfolded so it mm -hmm. is a good time for friends and families to to come out and enjoy yeah because my mother went i cannot remember 2019 or 2020 but mm -hmm. She went and she was going on about it for <laughs> weeks and weeks and weeks like probably yeah. if i ask her now she said oh my god the museum tour and she started <laughs> going on and on yeah it was really really good it, Yes. Um, so if you are coming, we are going to strongly urge you to bring a flashlight mm -hmm. and a bottle of water. And I cannot stress this enough. Please wear comfortable clothing <laughs> and comfortable shoes um, because we will be going to some places that may require a little bit of walking and we don't want you to be uncomfortable at all. So please dress comfortably and be prepared for a night of mystery and a night of intrigue. Okay, that's good. It yeah. sounds good. It, it, uh, from what she said, it sounds good. And I like that. Y'all have kept it up and keep mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, the purpose of these tours really is to educate persons about our Barbadian culture mm -hmm. and heritage through the art of storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is an important part of what we call our intangible cultural heritage, mm -hmm. where oral traditions are passed from one generation to the next. So there are lots of stories, lots of folk songs that we grew up singing. Mm -hmm. And people don't really know like these stories don't know at behind all. Trust it. Me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was actually speaking to our tour guide um, earlier this week, and she explained to me the story of Millie gone to Brazil, which mm -hmm. I unfortunately have never read really heard about the background right. to it. So it's a popular Bajan folk song, actually a story about an abusive husband, Bailey, who tells people that his common-law wife, Millie, had gone to Brazil at the time when many Barbadians were migrating to the country. That's a believable story, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, people picking up a girl. Let's exactly. say with Panama. Like, oh, she gone she said, oh, is she going along Oh, she probably just gone to Brazil. But really and truly, he discovered that Millie was planning to leave him and he commits the most heinous crime. He kills her and throws her corpse into a well. Wow. So, yeah. you know, that's going to make you... Such a dark story. Yeah. yeah so then a... next time you hear this, the, this folk song, Millie Gone to the Brazil. Brazil. Oh, Lord, Millie. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. That, is the, that is the gist of and what we actually sang as happened. children. That, that's, that's, that's a folk song. That's one of our cultural songs. It wow. Is, a murder. Yes. Okay. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Okay, interesting. Yeah, um, and I'm yeah. sure that many of you, like your mother, who would have joined the last deputor, would remember that because when, once you hear that story, like you're there's not just forget that. There's right, exactly. Back. There's no like. <laughs> So what are we singing? You know, I used to sing that yes. very happily as a child. Very so. happy. You have no idea. Poor Millie, as you say. Right, poor Millie. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yes. yes. So if you actually follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and mm. that is at Barbados Museum, you will see that we are passionate about sharing stories like these of Barbados and Barbadians. Um, on social media, we create a series of posts called This Day in History, which mm -hmm. actually examines a lot of events and stuff that would have happened years before that. Honestly, none of us may have actually never heard never of. Never heard of, never knew. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we really try at the Barbados Museum to, you know, share these stories 
with our uh, audience, mm-hmm. stories of Barbados, stories of things that happened in Barbados as well. So, you know, it's a... It's an evolving, it's an evolving thing. And we, yeah. we try to tell a lot of these narratives through bus tours mm-hmm. because obviously um, it is, a, you know, a fun source of entertainment, not just for like individuals, but like for families and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, so this month we are doing a night tour, which is our deputy tour. However, mm-hmm. we have offered other tours in the past. Like we had an ancestral trails tour. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We had ruins of Barbados tour where we went to like various um, ruins around Barbados. So like uh, I saw Harry Smith. Harry right? Smith yeah. was one of them. Um, Farley Hill, the Farley mm-hmm. Hill. Um, the ruin was one right, as yeah. well. So obviously you see these structures and you never really think, these were actually functional before right, exactly. and they had their own stories right. like white and, and living them exactly and all sorts of things so we try wherever possible to like theme tours around certain things so it's mm-hmm. really like a good experience yeah. for people where people could get a better feeling exactly. a, a kind of a glimpse into the past that yeah, type of exactly. thing exactly and I mean like there's just there's just so many stories just so much history to explore it's really it's an amazing thing right because people don't get that people think that I don't know Barbara's is kind of boring or that the traditional story that you've been told it was colonized mm-hmm. slavery independence and the present day and it's like there's so many stories that went so on in that period many stories that went on in that period and the Barbados Museum is here to just ensure that you know those stories are not forgotten right that you know even our children and our generations to come are still aware of these things we're really trying to keep these traditions and stuff alive um, we actually have any moment two temporary exhibitions at the Barbados Museum. Um, one on our journey to becoming a republic, mm-hmm. which we are gonna is coming up to our first year anniversary right, of becoming yeah. a republic. So that would be interesting, you know, to see to kind of like see our journey of how we how we came to be where we are today. Yeah. Um, we also have another one called the Intangible Cultural Heritage of Barbados. And this basically just, you know, goes into detail the oral traditions and the customs and stuff. Like when you think about a Saturday, you think, I need to put in a put in souls, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you can't go too late or the put in souls sell out. Yeah. Then 12 o'clock. People the, don't got to put in souls. You know, yep. I can't tell you the last time I had put in souls because I like to, to lay in my bed late. Do you use the whole of me. <laughs> so when I was, like, I used to go to this little, um, a tiny little shot in Sweet Bottom in mm-hmm. St. George. And like two, three o'clock, women's like you could you see what you get, but exactly. yeah, exactly. But I know if we got, you know, you can't expect to go for salsa at twelve o'clock in the afternoon. It is it's like it in the morning, poor, you know, <laughs> you, could, you could get a cheek or an ear, and, that <laughs> so. and I like I let myself lean, so I can't. Mm-hmm. I eat anything. I, can't I, I, I like you got your tongue, you got your cheek, you got the ear, and then them little funny bits I would eat. So <laughs> that is you, but mm, I need yeah. I need my soul lean, lean, but things so. like that. They they're actually uh, portraits of old time mobby women. Mm-hmm. It was just women that who used to walk around with these mobby canisters on their head mm-hmm. and just, you know, like pouring up mobby and glasses and giving persons. These are not things, unless you visit the museum or you hear from like your grandmother and mm-hmm. stuff, these are stories that you would never probably even hear about. Yeah. So no, there are lots of things in our Barbadian culture that unless, you know, you, you really try to do some research or do some reading into it or visit the museum or follow us on social media, you're not really going to be able to to experience that. You no, know, because yeah. we, we, we've seen that, like, you get millennials, younger millennials, generations, who have no connection with the culture, who don't know the stories, don't know the pictures, don't know anything mm-hmm. about culture. You know, you just Barbadian, you just exist. <laughs> Without considering, wait a minute, where did, where did they come, come from? from? Exactly. There we go. Who are my people? What do we used to do? Mm-hmm. Where do I do this stuff? Where do we eat, putting the sauce on the Saturday, that type of that's stuff? That's the thing. You just grow up doing things. You're like, oh, that's just normal. That's just normal, right? That, that, go that's to Trinidad, go to another country. They'll be like, what, what are you talking, talking about? about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's unique to Barbados. It's unique to us. And I just feel like that is something that we need to embrace and Embr- celebrate right, exactly. and uh, highlight, explore yeah. and... So, yeah, that's what we try to do a lot with our tours at the museum. Um, we offer different tours in, a, in addition to the bus tours. We have walking tours of like the garrison mm-hmm. and Bridgetown and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, there's lots of different stories. The garrison area actually used to be a military base. Mm-hmm. The actual museum itself used to be a military prison. So there's lots of different things to explore in that area um, and 
in Bridgestone as well. Right. Yes, that's very true. Yes. Very, uh, so much history, as you say, again, like is the changing face of Bridgetown, mm-hmm. the changing face of that area because it was like a whole military garrison. You just a come pass through like garrison. that. <laughs> so. And now you just pass it, everything. You just take it for granted what may have happened before. Right, exactly. Because yeah. I, 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 there's a book I bought from the museum. I think it's Hills, Halls and Holes. Mm-hmm. And it talks about how it used to be swamp grown mm-hmm. and there'd be crabs and stuff like that and people get malaria and die. And <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> so yeah, I know, right? All the soldiers, it was like, it had a name of crab town because mm-hmm. all the parade ground was just bear crab holes. So, yeah, and again, passing that area, you would never you think, would never think that. You would, would never, never think, think that's that what all. it was. So, yeah, there's there's lots, lots to explore um, in Barbados. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot, mm-hmm. a lot. Because even the St. Anne's Fort, how that was to be like a city del, mm-hmm. and that's where they were building Fort George, all that kind of stuff. All, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's yeah. very important. I, I'm glad that y'all do those stories and tell those his, histories and, you know, let people know about their culture mm-hmm. and their customs, the oral history too as well, stuff that just isn't written down, that just passed on and on. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> in November, we're actually planning to have an independent store. Mm-hmm. Um, the details of that have not really been finalized as yet. Mm-hmm. But if you are interested in joining one of these bus tours that I would have mentioned, you can just follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Barbados Museum mm-hmm. or, you know, give us a call at 538-0201 and we'd be happy to assist you in booking tours if you want to book a private tour of one of the uh, bus tours you would have had before like the ancestral trails and all of that you can also do that as well once you just contact us we'll be able to facilitate that for you and arrange it and yes. say, oh, that's good that's yeah. actually very very nice because yeah. people who would have missed stuff who want to do it over or people who come in from the diaspora mm-hmm. who say i want to experience this but it went already exactly how do i book this again that exactly. type of thing okay that makes sense and of course we are open monday to saturday from 9 a.m until 5 p.m we recently opened a children's gallery um at the museum and that honestly if your children come to that they are not going to want to leave and it's that, an, honestly it's, it's an interactive Very playground good. They get to run around. They get to touch things. They get to build things and destroy things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry I'm not a child. Right, to experience <laughs> it. be able to experience <laughs> it, but they go in there and they have an absolute blast. So if you are interested in letting the children come for a tour, please, please give us a call at 538-0201 and let's book you in. Um, so yes, there's just, there's just lots. A lot to do, yeah. Lots to I, do. I like that children's gallery, the steel pan bit. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know you love music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there's like steel pan, there's a human body exhibit where the children can actually perform surgery. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I have done the heart transplant before and <laughs> unfortunately... I lost the patient. You lost the patient. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, you know, your kids would have better luck. Be better. Yeah, be better yeah. they, 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 they can grow up to be a doctor. It's too late for me. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I really like Steve Pan because I've never seen this anywhere else. Yeah. So sure. it was very unique in that type and of I way. And I think uh, they actually have, there's actually two songs on mm. there you can play. I can't quite remember them, but mm. basically you can go in there and you can be a steel pan artist for the day. Imagine that. Yeah. I really like that because it, it, it ties in then with our history and our culture. Correct, yeah, correct. Exactly. And it helps the children to understand certain principles in a way as well. So they can mm. learn all about music. They can learn about, as I said, the human body exhibit. There's mm. a there's an exhibition in there which deals with like aerodynamics oh, and wow. just yeah. lots and lots of different things. Honestly, the children, as I say, they have a blast. If you know you're a teacher, you want to bring your children there. That is also fantastic, and that's fine as well. We do a lot of school tours <laughs> um, during the week, so yeah. And then you have your standard, your permanent gallery too, as well. In yes. addition to. The children's gallery in addition to the um, temporary galleries too as well. Yes. So as I mentioned, uh, the museum actually used to be a military prison. Mm -hmm. So we actually have a military gallery and we have a replica of a prison cell. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, that would be interesting. Yeah, right. That's interesting. Um, We have galleries which talk about slavery and, you know, the flora and fauna of Barbados. Mm -hmm. 
We have, we just, there's just so much to explore. To I mean, we yeah. have an African gallery because obviously a lot of our forefathers would have come from Africa. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people think of Africa as just one whole country. Right. There's several countries in right. the continent. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. In the Africa. continent of it Africa. It is a continent. <laughs> it is not just one country. Right. So, like, yeah, there's different, different things to explore at the museum. That's good. That's very, very fantastic. And then you got the new section at the back too that does uh, theatre plays. and Yeah, so we have a fully equipped wall garden theatre. Wall garden theatre, that's it, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, if you are interested in doing uh, dramatisation shows, we actually have the Richard Stout Teen Talent um, competition going on on Sundays there now. Mm. Um, We have people normally rent the museum for different occasions so if you want to have a wedding there you can it's it makes a beautiful backdrop for the photos you can take a photo for the canon we have a bearded fig tree at the front yeah there's just true. different lo- it's really a different kind of location and you know people love to do events there um we do like weddings as i said we do fets conferences lectures Anything, we'll birthday anything, parties. Right. We started children's parties because of the children's gallery. Mm-hmm. So they can play in the gallery for like an hour. Or so then there's a, there's a lot of space there that they can run around. Right. They can put a jumping a tent in yeah, there. Right, that's true. Whatever you can imagine, you can actually do it at the museum. museum. You just you just so. can't cook there. Right. <laughs> so don't expect to bring your groceries. Right. If you don't have no, no open flame, it's a low. Do not burn mm-hmm. down the people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, but for all intents and purposes, it's a full entertainment yes, area. Yes, it's a full entertainment area, for sure, for and sure. And you still have the history and the heritage involved, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you also have the Shellstone Library. Yeah, so we have an on-site research library. So a lot of people who are writing, like, books and research papers and stuff, they can actually come down to the library. There's a lot of old documentation there. A lot of maps, we have journals, we have ledgers, different things. A lot of people who are actually looking to trace their family history, Mm -hmm. which is very uh, important to some people, you know, find out where they came from, their ancestors. All of that can be done at our library. So you would just have to contact our librarian Mm -hmm. if you want to book a visit. Mm -hmm. Um, Her name is Harriet Pierce, and you can contact her at library at barbnews.org.bb. And she will be more than happy to assist with whatever queries you have. That's perfect. And you also have books for sale too as well, right? Yes. So we actually have a gift shop on site. Um, There you can find a lot of Beijing books. The museum has actually published some of its own books as well. So you can find that there. Um, There's a lot of arts and crafts, local snacks, local jewelry. So yeah, there's pretty much Christmas is coming up, guys. True, so you true. know, if you're looking for a location that's outside of town that has parking right there that you can just bop in and bop out, that's we'll that's the museum stuff, yeah. shop for you. <laughs> I miss it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Elena, for joining us. No problem. It was my pleasure, Luke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I look forward to the W tour then this year. I, I really do hope to see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't run away. <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> I think it was some of the locations that actually be pretty creepy because y'all have shared some stuff online in yeah. terms of like the old stories. Like, yeah, yeah, deal. we do. Yeah, so we have been, you know, hyping people up for the right. tour and letting them know, okay, well, this happens. So we had the Allendale uh, story. We had the, Ch- not Chase Fault. No, the, uh, Welch Mahal. Welch Mahal, yes. Very because good, a lot yeah. of people think, oh, it's just a Chase Fault. Right. There were multiple vaults in Barbados that, you know, that had very some, creepy. Yeah. Some, some questionable <laughs> things happen, but, you know, we'll save that for the deputy tour. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff there. <laughs> Welcome to the Lore Up podcast, powered by Basil D Magazine. Tonight we're here with Chef Seth Hassan Bromley, <laughs> one of the chefs from Food and Rum Barbados 2022. Good evening. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for joining us. So we just wanted to touch a little bit on your background as a chef, where you grew up, how you came to Barbados, how you got everything sorted, how you got everything started too as well. Sure. So I'm actually a bit of a nomad. Uh, <laughs> I was born in the States, um, mm-hmm. but I grew up between uh, the UK and Australia. Mm-hmm. It's like a bit of a weird accent. Well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very unplaceable. Very uh, Commonwealth, yeah. Yeah, very Commonwealth. Yeah, I've lived in about six countries so far. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I've been a chef for about 10 years now. 10 years. Uh, wow. I started actually pretty late. Um, I was uh, working in an office. Mm-hmm. I have a master's degree in what? psychology. Yeah, what? In psychology, yeah. yeah, that's okay. That's <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Um, I didn't like working in office, mm-hmm. um, started washing dishes, mm-hmm. um, at a pub down the road from me and it just went from there. 
I've had some really great opportunities, worked at some amazing restaurants uh, in the UK. I know some pretty big names. Uh, can name drop a bit here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Heston Blumenthal, mm -hmm. uh, Marcus Waring, Simon Rogan, Phil Howard, back when he owned The Square. Mm -hmm. um, done some incredible things. It was pretty stressful time. Uh, some long hours uh, in London, especially mm -hmm. eight, 16, 18 hour days. Wow. Uh, I think my record in a week was 115 hours. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Negative. <laughs> uh, I got some really good stories from that time though. Mm -hmm. um, we had some good fun. Uh, worked at the square. Um, we finished on a Friday night about 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, went out for drinks, went bar hopping, finished about six. <laughs> I had just about enough time to get home, shower, and then go right back to work the next day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you were a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> I was young. I was young. Um, a couple of the guys actually slept outside the restaurant that night. Yeah, I could, yeah. I could definitely see that. Because uh, they only had about an hour and it was too long for them to get home. So. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, we also had a guy, a, a bit of a, a bit of a funny one as well. Um, I worked at a restaurant. We had a guy called Rob. He was a mm -hmm. kitchen porter. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was amazing. Uh, he was an older guy. Older guys always make the best kitchen. Yeah. Porters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he used to bring us sweets, um, on like busy days. Mm -hmm. So he'd go out when we couldn't go out and he'd buy us Cokes and sweets and jelly babies just to get us through service. Yeah. Uh, he lasted about two months, which is pretty long actually for a pot wash. <laughs> um, and then a couple of weeks after he quit, um, the restaurant was actually robbed. Yeah, and they tried to take the safe. Um, they tried to take the safe, but it was too heavy. They hadn't prepared well enough, so they busted down the door, got the safe out of the out of the office, dragged it all the way through, ruining the floor of the restaurant, all the way through the restaurant. Got it out the back door, and then it was too heavy for them to get to their car, so they just, so left, just it left it in the middle it, of the parking yeah. lot. And it turned out, ironically, it was Rob, <laughs> who had of course. forgotten to hide his face, <laughs> and everybody here knew him. Yeah, yeah. so, wow. Yeah, yeah. hilarious. Some uh, real, real experiences, <laughs> honestly and truly. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I kind of worked my way up, pot washing. Mm -hmm. I've had some really, uh, really lucky breaks, really. Yeah. Uh, and I got where I am today, uh, really um, classical training. It was hard, but it was it was worth it. Yeah. So, so how you got from then the UK then to Barbados? That's that's quite a long jump, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, uh, I was I had the good fortune of meeting a Bajan, mm. um, and we got married. Yeah. Yes, and uh, we ended up moving here. Um, just I needed something new to do. I yeah. love moving countries. Yeah, and um, she wanted to come back home to be with her family. So, okay, that's a good match. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we came at a bit of a weird time though, at the end of 2018. Mm -hmm. So only had about a year before or a year or two, basically before COVID. Yeah. Before COVID yeah, hit and then really rough. Yeah. Actually. Very, very rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but then you jumped straight into, um, the culinary field here and got involved in cooking and all that. Yeah. Um, so I started, I had a few job offers before I even left the country. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, thanks a lot to basically people I'd worked under. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, so I ended up working at the Cliff under Paul Owens mm -hmm. for about two years, mm -hmm. um, consulting and doing some menu development for him. Mm -hmm. um, and then when COVID happened and they closed, mm -hmm. then I sort of bounced around doing um, consulting and freelancing and private chefing and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, which is how I actually got involved in the food and rum. Um, ah, okay. Yeah, because... Uh, you know, Barbados, you got to know someone. Who right, you know someone who knows someone. Yeah. <laughs> so I managed to sort of, you know, get the opportunity. I'm mm. really excited about that. Really yeah. honored to work with the guys this year. They're really good. Yeah, really, it's a whole really team. A whole yeah. team is, is really good. Everybody yeah. involved is really good from top to bottom, straight, straight yeah. through. So I've been really lucky. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it too. <laughs> <as well. laughs> so what would you say then is your signature dish? Um... Uh, I think like a lot of chefs, I hate that term. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we kind of learn how to do everything. Mm -hmm. um, although if I am asked, often you're asked to do like a little tasting dish if you right. get a, a job, like a higher level. Mm -hmm. um, I always do the same tasting dish, which is a dish one of my old head chefs did on MasterChef, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a scallop with seaweed beurre blanc. Mm -hmm. I always do that. It's my go-to. It's like five ingredients. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. um, but I don't really yeah. have a signature yeah, dish. Right, your yeah. signature dish. Um, I guess is as you say, is you know how to do it, you're good at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a proper showcase of your skills and abilities as a chef. Yeah, I could kind of do it before I tried to do everything. Yeah. Um, I kind of try to focus on vegetarian and local. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom was a vegetarian. Um, she hated going out to eat. Mm -hmm. um, that's really stuck with me because it was everything was just boring. It was all tomatoes, yeah. cheese, risotto. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So I try to, I, I really like cooking vegetarian food. I find it a really good challenge. Um, and I love you using local produce. That's like my main focus. Um, this was a bit of a shameless plug this week at Open yeah. Kitchen where I work. Um, <laughs> next week we're doing a special all local produce starter main dessert. Everything is local apart from salt and oil because you can't actually. Wait, wait, you can't get it here. This is, is that part of Slow 7? Yeah, Slow yeah, 7. Slow yeah. 7 will be, yeah, yeah, I figure that's my so, song. Right yeah. so. um, we're doing a, uh, I'm doing a plantain bhajis. Mm -hmm with uh black belly lamb mm -hmm. buna which is a type of curry right i uh, cooked down really slowly um and a coconut and lemongrass raita with lemongrass from my garden mm -hmm. um and then i'm doing a um, kind of top to tail pig so i've got a crispy belly um and a slow cooked loin mm -hmm. um and i'm doing a breadfruit cuckoo um with um torched scotch bonnets and okras and then i've got a um a bake uh, fluffy bake, um, like a Trinidadian style. Yeah. Stuffed mm. with passion fruit curd and okay, local chocolate from Agape Chocolate. Yeah. Okay. And mint ice cream. <laughs> you, you got your stuff done back. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone wants to try that. You know what to pass through and just give it a little yeah, try. Yeah, it's a little taste, you know. <laughs> no, that sounds absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that chefs are getting into the Slow Seven movement yeah, and their really challenge cool. and incorporating all local foods and seeing different dishes that they could do with it. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good for the uh, economy, but it's also mm -hmm. really good for the environment. Right, so that's less true. distance your food travels, the less carbon impact you have right. on the environment. So that's brilliant stuff. I'm yeah. glad to hear you do uh, vegetarian stuff because normally you wouldn't get that. Um, I know, same as your mother. I had a friend who was a vegetarian, so it same. I always used to be like, oh, yeah. I hate to go out because it's going to be hard. Yeah, it's hard to find something. It's always the same thing. It's exactly, always boring. it's always boring, yeah. right? And uh, vegetarian food doesn't need to be boring. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. If you kind of focus on the ingredients and mm. we have some really great produce here. Um, you exactly. can get something really tasty and it doesn't have to be the same. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have the same miles, boring yeah. thing, you know, a salad or, you know, or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> exactly that. So what should people look forward um, from you for, at this year's festival? Um, that's a really hard question, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like I'm kind of bigging myself up. But, uh... Did you should at you? you? You should be your own job. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I'd like to think my food is very thoughtful mm -hmm. and very heartfelt. Mm -hmm. Um, and I come from kind of a unique place because of my background. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a fusion between British food and Belgian food, mm -hmm. um, which aren't very typical cuisines. Yeah. Um, so I've got, but I have two dishes. Um, each of them has a story to it. Um, the first one is based on kind of a Barbadian Christmas. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I've got a pork loin, um, and it's wrapped in a mousseline, which I've made with a green seasoning, mm -hmm. uh, which again, most of the herbs I've grown myself, chardonnay, chives, thyme, oregano. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've wrapped all of that again in farmer's choice bacon. Well, la -di da yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is then uh, fried until it's super crisp. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've made a remoulade with green, uh, sorry, with golden apples, which is one of my favorite fruits. Yeah. Uh, one of the first things I had when I came to Barbados, absolutely love them. Um, so, uh, remoulade is kind of like a fancy, um, coleslaw. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've got the golden apple in there for sharpness, a bit of celery, um, some golden apple leaves, mm -hmm. um, which are actually really tasty. Right. Yeah. Cause yeah. a lot of people don't know. You normally uh, don't yeah. hear that. Yeah. yeah. Actually. Um, they're actually in, again, in Trinidad, they use them a lot in there, like chow and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, but they're really good. So I've got some golden apple leaves in there, um, some whole grain mustard, mm -hmm. and then I've made a sorrel ketchup with rum. Sorrel, sorrel and ketchup. ketchup. Wow. Yeah, all the taste of Christmas in there. Yeah. Uh, like, orange zest, sorrel, cinnamon, clove, bay leaves. That's yeah. actually yeah. pretty good, actually. That sounds really yeah. good. You know, it's like you bring the samples and the track. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds really, really good. Um, I like the inclusion of that. Yeah. Um, it's kind of an homage. So, yeah. Because I never had sorrel before either before I come here. So, yeah. It's not really something you can get in the UK. True. That's true. Ibiscus, that's very true. So. Yeah. Uh, and then the other dish is kind of a play on um, my childhood. Mm -hmm. So I was actually raised Jewish. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, and we're all about holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of our biggest holidays is Hanukkah, and Hanukkah in our house meant latkes. Mm -hmm. um, latkes are kind of like a cross between a, I would say, a hash brown and a pancake. Mm -hmm. um, so there's like potato, grated potato, onion, um, flour, egg. You make like a kind of patty and then you fry it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're crispy on the outside. They're soft in the middle. They're unbelievably delicious. Um, and it was kind of like pancake day. Right. 
Um, so mum would kind of like spend all day making these latkes. She'd fry them and we'd kind of stand in a queue. Yeah, she'd just... put one on our plate, we'd eat it. Then we'd go to the back of the queue <laughs> and she'd do that all day. Um, and then with the leftovers, she'd also make something um, like salt beef, mm -hmm. uh, which is a really long involved process. She'd have a bucket, um, she'd put the beef in it. She'd salt it for like a week. She'd rinse it and then she'd slow cook it in the oven. Um, and then with the leftover latkes, she'd cut up the salt beef and fry them all together with a fried egg for breakfast. Oh, wow. Um, it was fattening, but yeah, delicious. really tasty. Yeah, I could um, imagine. So it's kind of like that. So I've done a sweet potato latke, um, which I've cooked in beef fat mm -hmm. um, with onions and garlic and rosemary. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've smoked a brisket for eight hours. Yeah. Um, and I've done some smoked pickles as well. Um, and then instead of the egg, we're going to do a uh, hollandaise sauce, which mm -hmm. is kind of like an emulsion of um, clarified butter and mm -hmm. stock and egg yolks. Mm -hmm. And I've infused it with fresh scotch bonnet and turmeric to bring the Bajan back into it. Yeah, really and, and truly. <laughs> the brisket's basted in extra old rum as well mm -hmm. for those eight hours. So. That is quite nice. <laughs> yeah. You said turmeric, and it may, <laughs> um, it may have Bajan thinking turmeric and all that. <laughs> <laughs> the Bajans have different words for turmeric. So oh, it's right, never yeah. said you hear turmeric, you tell your turmeric, that type of thing. So that's just, just yeah, it's just, yeah, 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 that even. <laughs> you go in the market, you hear that, right? You pronounce everything, but no, mm, we chop, 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 don't things, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah. Uh, what would you say is your favorite Barbadian cuisine? I know that you said. You do vegetarian stuff. I don't know if you like taste it at all. If you, um, yeah, yeah. When my mom, when my mom came here, mm -hmm. she had there's like an Itol place mm -hmm. out by um, Coconut Court. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's still there now. I'm not too shy there. Um, I know there really used good. to be a vegetarian place kind of like around the corner. Yeah, around like the corner. Strictly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like. She used to, every time she came, she was like, we have to go there, we have to go there, we have to go there. Yeah, because it was yeah. like this strictly vegetarian, strictly vegan. Strictly yeah, vegan. yeah, yeah. Everything was vegan. Everything was vegan, yeah. It was one of those times where she didn't have to worry about the menu. She right, you just anything. go. You she could literally moved. choose it. It was an expansive menu. I remember that yeah, place. Yeah, I love yeah. that place, um, yeah. She loved it. Um, I'm not vegan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually have three, I actually have three things. I yeah. couldn't choose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the first thing, one of the first things I ever tasted when I came to Barbados, my mother-in-law's baked snapper. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, fish was never really a big part of my diet mm -hmm. um, growing up. I didn't really live near the sea. Mm -hmm. um, I never, it was always boring. It was always like fish and chips, which is just right, really, right. the fish is just, boring. it's like yeah. barely any salt. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> exactly. um, she had seasoned this thing to the gills, literally. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an explosion of flavor in my mouth. I've never, I ate a whole snapper. Yeah. What? I, had another half of one before she was like, you need to stop now. <laughs> other people have to eat. Right. <laughs> um, so that definitely big impact on me. Barbecue pigtails. Uh, Leo. Yeah. Yes. The hands down. Hands yeah. down. Unbelievable. Uh, we eat a lot of bits in the UK. Mm -hmm. We eat trotters. We eat snout. We eat mm -hmm. tongue. I've never had a pigtail before. Yeah. It blew me away. Impeccable. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely. And, <laughs> And uh, green seasoning. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I can't cook without it now. Mm -hmm. I, as I said, I grow all my own herbs for it. Oh, right. There's always some in my fridge. Uh, I'd never come across it before. I just, really? I, it goes in everything I make, pretty yeah. much. Everything really? savory, it, mashed potatoes. Gives flavor, burgers, brings out everything, everything. yeah. yeah. Every, absolutely everything. So that's probably my favorite technique. Um, but yeah, I can't decide between the three of them. Makes perfect sense. Look at you, you know, a couple of years, you're a full beach already. <laughs> Try Making your own seasoning, that type yeah. of thing. Got some in the fridge. That's a real, like, Barbadian chef thing, and you know, I got my own seasoning, I got my own herbs. I'll take it in the blend. supermarket. Yeah, 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 secret yeah, blend. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying it. But exactly, you pass it on your family, all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, what are you looking forward to on your journey as a young chef? Um, kind of just learning and growing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited about this, like I said, the slow food movement, mm -hmm. um, the local produce, kind of reducing our carbon emissions, mm -hmm. sustainable forms of cooking. Um, I really, I have a fine dining background, mm -hmm. um, so I really want to kind of promote Bajan cuisine to that kind of level. Yeah. Um, if you go to a fine dining restaurant here, it's all imported produce. Yeah. Uh, um, that's that's not start. <laughs> that's no, because um, I agree with you because yeah. then it, it needs to be brought up to that level. As yeah. you say, there's a lot of imported stuff because people, um, whether it's restaurants or whether um, local people believe that outside is better, imported is better, but that's not yeah. necessarily the case. No, it's more consistent. And right. You can get more stuff year round. Yeah. Um, but if you work with the seasons and you work with the farmers and the producers, um, you know, you, you could know you what to do. Good. Exactly. Yeah, you, yeah, could, yeah. you could, 
your menu could go with the seasons yeah, and, and it could change and, and you know, stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's I think that's really important. And um there's a lot of restaurants that do that overseas. Mm. Um and I just think it'd be really nice to have that here. Yeah, I think so um, too as well. So that's something that I would be looking forward to. Yeah, I, I, I like that. That's a great yeah. answer, actually. <laughs> Thank you. I really um support that farm to table movement. Because it, it works for everybody. The restaurants get something consistent. The farmers get something consistent. It's a hand-in-hand exactly. hand procedure. Exactly. And we're really lucky in Barbados. It's a very small country. You can exactly. really get to know your farmers. Um, you know, you're not going to have one farmer that has 5,000 cattle. Right, exactly. You know, you're going to have somebody who grows sweet potatoes for like three months of the year. They're the best sweet potatoes you've ever tasted. Right. And then they rotate their crop again. And then you have That's tomatoes exactly and that it. kind of thing. Somebody who grows thyme. Somebody who does this. Yeah. Somebody's over here doing that, you know. And this person has really good soil. So you get a different flavor. All that type of stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So where can people find you physically throughout the year as well as online? Um, right. So as I mentioned, I do a bit of consulting and I do a bit of private chefing as well. Mm -hmm. um, so at the moment I'm at Open Kitchen. Mm -hmm. I'm there six days a week. Mm -hmm. I'm always behind the camera. <laughs> um, Coming to ask yeah, for Chef Bromley. Come yeah, in, yeah. say hi. Um, I do a lot of food there. Um, you're also, I'm also available to hire mm -hmm. um, as a private chef. I do private events, um, mostly fine dining stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you're planning something special, um, you can get in touch with me. My Instagram is at Chef Hassan Bromley. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a form there you can download or you can just instant message me. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a lot of pictures, a lot of videos. You can have a look at what I do there. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's perfect stuff. So thank you very much for joining us, Chef Seth. <laughs> You're welcome. It's lovely to be here. And that was a brilliant conversation. I absolutely loved yeah, it. So you great. gave us some new insights to you and to the food process and the way that you cook and what people can expect and what people can look forward to. And like, if they weren't sure, like, Oh, what's he going to do at his station? Then you get a better idea, all that type of stuff. Yeah. I hope to see everyone there. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Definitely good stuff. Thank you. Welcome to Lurie's Up Podcast with Basil D. Magazine. Okay, guys. So we are back with another episode. And this time I have two beautiful, voluptuous ladies all the way from the north. Are we calling it east or the north? East. Northeast. 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 <laughs> and they're sitting at the west and the east of me. I'm in between them. We have today, well, tonight, Selena and Janelle King of the St. Andrew Parish Ambassador Committee. So welcome, ladies. Welcome, welcome. Hey. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I love to talk to my guests before we go on air about, you know, what we're going to talk about, just things about themselves. And we were speaking about, speaking about how sweet St. Andrew is. Ladies, tell me a little bit before we get into the nitty gritty of what today is about. Tell me one word that you know, you, how you feel about St. Andrew. Just one word. For me, it's sweet. What about you, Janelle? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Uh-huh. <laughs> Selena? Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, St. Andrew is definitely, I'm not a country girl, but I love the outdoors. I love peace and I love serenity. And St. Andrew is definitely my escape. And today we're going to be speaking about St. Andrew Carnival. So this is definitely going to be a fun escape for everybody. And Selena and Janelle are going to take us through everything they have planned for us. Um, yeah. The hideaways, the foods, the drinks, the vendors, the snow cones, everything they have available to us, as well as some nice Beijing history about St. Andrew, because I need to know. So, Janelle, just, oh, well, Selena, I think you should just tell me, first of all, why you guys chose St. Andrew Carnival this time around? Yeah. Well, we chose St. Andrew Carnival this time around because we noticed that COVID would have put a lot of people or separate a lot of people being home, being restricted. And we recognize that crop over, you know, brought people back together. Mm. And the St. Andrew Carnival is also a carnival that's going to bring communities back together, bring people back together, bring back in the culture, entertainment, and bring the life back to the parish. So we thought this year, November 30th, Independence Day, Republic Day, St. Andrew's Day, mm. that we're going to bring back the culture into the people, mm. into the blood of the people of St. Andrew, and mm. into the entire 
for our beta population. So we determined, you know what carnival is it for us this year? We're going to do this carnival. We're going to bring back the life. We can get people back onto the roads and we're going to get this thing happening this year. So we chose the carnival to bring back a life into the community. Okay, so is this the first time for St. Andrew Carnival? No, it hasn't been the first time. It was t- it was done a few years ago. At first, it was a private entity um, that did it. Then the St. Andrew Parish Independence Committee took over, and I believe they did it one or two years, but we decided this year uh, we're going to take it to another level. We had a pause of COVID, mm-hmm. and then so it had like a probably a four or five year break in between there. Oh, wow. And yeah, so now we brought it back this year. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Lovely. Um, what is the difference that you're gonna we're gonna be seeing with St. Andrew Carnival in relation to Crop Over? Well, the difference is is that one is set in the parish of St. Andrew. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, picturesque location on a highway stretch that is lined with beauty yes. the entire way. Yes. Strong, beautiful winds, lovely scenery, awesome, beautiful people. The vibe, the history, the culture is just different in St. Andrew. We are part of Barbados, but we also have our own culture there. Mm -hmm. You know, we have peace. So you're coming down from Greenland, coming off into Long, up up the East Coast, into Long Pond, and that entire stretch is completely different. You can't have that anywhere else. You're not going to see the scenery. You're not going to get the, the east, you know, the north east trails hitting you mm-hmm. the way they will <laughs> any other part except for St. Andrew, <sighs> you know, and we're bringing that vibe and you have that scenery, you have that place there and then we also have the way that we have it set up, mm. you know. Well, speaking about the route, well, everything that you spoke about, you guys are getting extremely creative with the route and naming the sections. Yes. So as we were speaking before, you guys name off the sections. The first section is Turner Hallwoods. Turner's Hallwoods, yeah. Yes. And then you're going to go to the Coconut Walk. There's going to be Green Pond, Foster's Funland, the Sleeping Giant, if you guys know. <laughs> and then the Picture Hole, the Correct. most Instagrammable moment you have right now. <laughs> so you have... Two, four, six sections. Yeah. And each section is really telling a story about mm-hmm. where you're going from each part of St. Andrew all the way. Correct. Um, so you have any surprises at each place or you're just going to enjoy the route? Well, each section is basically depicting what we what they say is mm-hmm. so the section leaders because each section has a section leader okay they also bring their own twist to it fantastic they, some of them actually have little surprises as well so on the road you know you would see this prize from the section on the road mm-hmm. we have turner's hall woods and i know turner's hall was they have a special cocktail just for that section can you tantalize our senses on our vision of how the costume is going to look what colors are going to be um is it going to be like a a big costume a feathery costume a four-day costume what is it going to look like well it's really a t-shirt band costume Mm -hmm. however uh, some sections do have the four-day morning type swimsuit Mm -hmm. and then we also have the revamps so you get a t-shirt and you revamp it into whichever style you you get creative so we get creative with it Mm -hmm. asking for instance you know get creative get fun get excited you know you know show off the sections show what color is turner hallwood turner hallwood is green and white but it's like a a nice lime green Mm. fluorescent green and white we have pink we have yellow, we have blue. So it's like a hive of colors, okay. you know, that's just coming through from each section. Okay. And what color is the coconut walk? The coconut walk is green, like a uh, turquoise green. Okay. And um, pink. and a pink. And a pink. Ooh, the girls are going to like that one. Yeah. Uh, what about green pond? Green pond is white, but they have a iridescent print. So okay. the front of the green pond print has a picture of the green pond and then oh, it's wow. a, a iridescent print on the front. So it has a range of colors at the front of the shirt. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Um, what about Foster's Funland? Foster's Funland is pink and green and then the Y'all print, really working this pink though. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a pink but it's a different shade. Okay. Different shades of pink Okay, and it's a, a different shade of green as well. Mm-hmm. Um, The green is a more earth uh, more earth green or coconut green per mm. se and they, their print is 
super colorful. Mm-hmm. The print is blue and black and green and yellow. Mm-hmm. So you get all the colors, you know, coming out from the front. So the, the print just stands out. It uh, depicts what yes. for us to find land is, is, is a fun, exciting oh, the, print. Okay, get it. What about the Sleeping Giant? The Sleeping Giant is mm-hmm. yellow or blue. Mm-hmm. And then her the costume is blue, yellow, and black. Oh wow! Yeah, the, the swimsuit is blue, yellow, and black, and then her print has pink, yellow, blue. Are we going with the pinks yeah, again? Green, everything. Mm-hmm. It's just a hive of colors, you yeah. know. It's gonna, it's gonna look like a rainbow coming down the east coast. And the last one is the picture hole. The picture hole is red and yellow. Red and yellow. Ooh. And purple. And yeah, purple. yeah, red, yellow, and purple. Yeah. <laughs> wow, these colors, like when I when I <laughs> and I go on Instagram or I go and look. Oh my gosh, it's just going to be a swarm of yes. color and excitement on the road. That seems amazing. Oh Correct. my gosh. It is amazing. Lovely. Um, before we go on to the marketing side of St. Andrew Carnival, can you show out your designers or who were the ones that, you know, came up with the prints, the designs for the costumes? You had anybody that worked with you guys? Yes, we had everything branded. Okay. Um, they did quite a few. Oh, of, then the t-shirts and everything. Yeah, they did the uh the some of the designs and the okay. prints. Yeah, they actually probably did like almost all of them. Yeah, everything okay. branded. Everything branded. Show it to you guys. I know I get my shirts from them too. Okay, lovely. So Jill, my sweet lovely next to me, <laughs> <laughs> she is the public relations officer for the marketing of St. Andrew Carnival. So how are you going to tell a story to our audience about St. Andrew Carnival to get us out there? No problem. St. Andrew Carnival is a carnival to be at November 30th. Yes. We are creating this experience, one that you're not going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. As Selena was painting the picture, just imagine yourself chipping from Greenland Mm. with that wind, with that sea breeze, Mm -hmm. coupled with the music and the vine. Mm. That's an experience that you're not going to get anywhere. Not anywhere. Not on earth. (laughs) Just just there. And this is unique to the parish of St. Andrew because the parish of St. Andrew is unique in itself. Mm -hmm. As as we rightfully said, we have secret treasures. Mm. So once you come to this car, well, you, you will get to experience a treasure in itself. Mm-hmm. So that is why we wanted something that was catchy and that would resonate with the souls of people. Because mm. people have been through a difficult time. Definitely. So this time now is for people to come and unwind and relax and enjoy an the escape. beauty. Yes. It's an escape, yes. a hidden escape. A hidden escape. A hidden escape. Mm-hmm. So we want to create that experience for people to come and enjoy. Lovely. So that's why we've put so much work and emphasis on the names of the sections Mm -hmm. and on the bands. I know Selena spoke about everything branded. There are other designers as well that would have put work into these designs Mm -hmm. and then the band leaders of themselves or section leaders, they would have put thought into what they want to depict Mm -hmm. to get people to resonate with the section, Mm -hmm. you know? So so that is why we put in so much work in the names and and getting that feeling, that energy, that vibe to resonate with people's soul, mind, and energy to come out to this carnival. Lovely. And as I said, we had people had a difficult time. So this is a time now that we this is where the positivity will you know, will come out mm-hmm. where people have and a day. Soul. Yes, yeah. definitely. And it's Independence soul. Day, so people get to experience some good conkeys, mm-hmm. countryside conkeys. And it's literally another form of emancipation. Correct. Yes, correct. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I definitely. understand you. <laughs> Lovely. Definitely. So tell me your demographic for this carnival. Are you looking at teenagers? 20-year-olds, older people? Like, who are you looking to come to this carnival? That's such a good question that you ask because (laughs) every band here, Mm -hmm. section that we listed, caters to all. Mm. Caters to every demographic that you have just listed off. The um the teenagers, mm-hmm. the young adults, mm-hmm. the mature people, Correct. the old people. Yeah. Every single one. Turner's Hallwoods, the Coconut Walk, yep. Green Pond, Fossils Fun Land, mm-hmm. Sleeping Giant Picture Hole. It caters to every single demographic mm-hmm. that you have just listed. Fantastic. I want you to tell me about what I may get in any package when I sign up or run it while list for you know, going to St. Andrew Carnival. So what's the process like? Do I sign up? Do I get a package? Do I get the package before? What is in the package? Tell me a little bit about, 
you know, what I'm going to get. Sure, no problem. Well, for each session, it's different. But what I can tell you Mm -hmm. is that once you register, Mm -hmm. that secures your spot first thing. Fantastic. Right, so you need to secure your spot. Mm -hmm. Then, um, depending on which section that you jump in, Mm -hmm. you have the um, option of having breakfast or lunch. Okay. You have your T-shirt. What time does it start? It's we ask people to assemble at eight, but we know that okay. Bajans are fashionably late. <laughs> so we know that that is going to start around nine, nine oh, thirty. But you got the option to get breakfast first. Yes. yes. On the, the East Coast. Oh, that's all the Greenland. 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 Oh. Greenland. Oh. Greenery. Greenery. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes, okay. Definitely. So it. you have that option there where you can get breakfast. Mm-hmm. And then you have, um, as I was, uh, as we're speaking about the packages, you get your t-shirts, you get your paints, you get your whistles, your trinkets. It. You get drinks on the road, you get finger foods, you oh. get snacks, oh, you get and you get your special cocktails, your booze, Ooh, your drinks, yes. your premium drinks. Mm-hmm. So we have not left anything out because we want you to have that experience. Mm-hmm. Yes, this year is going to be big, but we want to build on the festival, mm-hmm. on the carnival every year to make it yes. bigger and better because we want people to experience that said Andrew unique ex- experience. I love this um about you know the parish carnivals because we have gone to move crop over into more of an international carnival right where we're catering more so to you know our tourists mm-hmm. and people who you know want to know more about Barbados. But these small carnivals bring together a sense of community and love. Yes. And I absolutely love that you can, it's not saying that it's not for a tourist, but this always brings together, you know, small communities and you can always reminisce on when you were younger and you probably when we went playing carnival, you know, <laughs> like it's, it's literally like core memories that you build yes. when you always have this form of, love yes. yes through movement and dance and music that a lot of other cultures around the world will never get to experience yeah exactly. so i think it's very beautiful that you guys are doing this can you tell me um the safety measures that you're gonna have on the road Yes, for certain. I will speak to some, but Selena, she will speak to most of them because okay. <laughs> she is the carnival manager. All right, manager girl. So she has all of the details that I don't. Mm-hmm. But I know for certain that yeah. we will have security by the um, Barbados Police Service. Mm-hmm. We're also going to have private security. Yes. Mm-hmm. Selena, what other security will yes, we have? Ha- for us, um, safety is paramount. So we, we have made sure that we have cross our T's and dot our I's because obviously we want to have fun, but we also want to be safe. Mm-hmm. So we engage with the Barbados Police Force and we have obviously asked them, you know, based on the numbers that we are expecting, how many police, how many security do we need? So we have engaged with them. We have gotten those triggers and we have assigned, you know, the persons to those numbers. Mm-hmm. So we have that, we have the private security and we have the private persons in the band, outside the band, on the East Coast and on the Long Pond as well. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we have engaged the ambulance service as well to make sure you know anyone gets sick and mm-hmm. um, we also have private vehicles that indicate in the event some person falls down here you mm-hmm. know ambulance is up there you know we can get them okay. you know move them to some place uh, yeah feel safe mm-hmm. you know so we, we have definitely considered that and we may we are we have made sure that that is covered for our carnival and if the cute girls want to go in the bathroom there is bathroom yes available. we have bathroom facilities mm-hmm. on road um starting at the greenland all the way on road. we have the bathrooms all the way down to the bow playing playing field onto Long Pond because at Long Pond that's where you have the after party. Mm. So you have your bathroom facilities oh, there. Oh, after yeah. party? Let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. We call it a Long Pond walk down. <laughs> okay. So after you walk up on the highway, you walk down. You walk down on the Long Pond. Love it. Love <laughs> it. So now you're walking down on the Long Pond. <laughs> mm-hmm. So when you come off, so Long Pond starts at 10 and that's open to everybody. Mm-hmm. So if you don't want to line the coast, line the road, you just want to bring your kids out there's a kid zone there there's a jumping tent being spade to lucky dip you bring the kids out early while mm-hmm. people are jumping and partying um there we 
music, live DJ entertainment, okay. live performances. We got the vendors, the food and the drinks, popcorn, snow cone. You know, we having a full fun day, okay. carnival fun day. Yeah, on the long asking time. if it's a fun day. Yeah, as well. it's a fun day as well. So while people jamming down the highway, mm-hmm. we have a fun day <laughs> at the end. So okay. while the bands come off the highway and come into the long pond where they will congregate, you know, we have all the other stuff going on as well. So we're making sure it's full community, you know, because some persons won't, don't don't want to lay the highway. Mm-hmm. Some persons don't want to jump, but they want to come out and relax, mm-hmm. you know, go across but the actual long pond, take Support. some pictures, you know, get some fat parts off the trees and see grapes, yeah. you know, just walk through and enjoy the long pond for what it is. So we're mm-hmm. catering for everybody on that day. Mm-hmm. Right. And as she rightfully said, it's community. Yes. Because the rope is the rope will actually go through Tunic. several communities okay. of the parish. Lovely. So yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Um, ladies, this is a personal question. What is your most are you before I go, are you from St. Andrew? Yes. Yes. Born okay. and raised. So what is your most monumental place in St. Andrew that sits with your soul? You can go first. Don't don't all rush at once. <laughs> I'll tell you mine. Mine is it's hard to explain, but it's when you go up Morgan Lewis and you know they say that if you put the car in yeah. neutral, <laughs> it would go back down. Correct. It does. And that scenery looking over the, the East Coast, I think it's from Cherry Tree Hill. Cherry Tree Hill. You're seeing Green Pond. Yes. Mm-hmm. That area is sweet. It is. It's sweet. It's like sucking sugar cane. Correct. It's like putting some brown sugar in your coffee. Mm-hmm. It's like feeling the, the the breeze on your skin it feels like like home yes yeah so that's my, my that's my place where where's your place my place is babylon road okay where's that and babylon road is part of bell plain but where I live in Babylon, there is a hill behind me. Mm-hmm. So once you go to the top of that hill, you get to view all of Walkers, all of Rock Hall, part of Friday Hill, mm-hmm. you know, as far out to Hillaby. Mm-hmm. So you get all of that greenery, greenery. And when it is rainy season and everything is green, mm-hmm. it is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And as an, on a nice bright day when the sky is clear, the clouds are minimal, it feels like you're in heaven. Yes. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yes. And for me, that is home. That is, that is peace. Mm. You know, we fly our kites from there and that is peace. Yes. You get goosebumps talking yes. about it. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's absolutely mm. amazing, absolutely beautiful. And, and that's home for me. Mm. Who's yours? For me, mm-hmm. I love the beach. The beach. So is I, it Andrew? Yes. I you love to tell me where the spot is? I girl? love to go to Barclays Park. Okay, yes, I know. And park my car there. And, that and then I walk cattle down. wash. Yeah, no, not cattle wash. Okay. Before you get to cattle yeah. wash, okay. there's Barclays Park. Okay, right. And you go down, and I like to go on that beach and just listen to the sea waves, mm-hmm. the wind, and feel the sea breeze upon my face Mm. I like that Mm. and that is my place I can sit on the grass because it's well maintained Mm. by the NCC Mm -hmm. and I just sit there and I meditate and I take that I love that I think that the waves talk back to you and that's me and I love (laughs) but the waves talk back to you they they are so loud they go in and out Mm -hmm. and if you just sit down and listen to that side of St. Andrew it feels like it's a conversation between your soul Correct. and the waves. And I love to go on evenings where the sun is going to set. Yeah. So you just see the sun, although it's setting in the west, mm-hmm. you still get those sun rays where it stretches across that horizon. Mm-hmm. And Colors. it just does something to you. It mm-hmm. makes everything just melt. Mm-hmm. It just goes away. And I love that is my sweet place. Mm, I <laughs> On that love seashore, it. that is my sweet place. Okay. All right, ladies. <laughs> this is this is so exciting. <laughs> I, I guess y'all got to get to this place. <laughs> okay, Definitely. so let me wind down now. Let's take it down. Mm-hmm. Where can I find your social media handles or your Instagram, Facebook? How can I register? Just give me a full rundown of the socials that I can reach you by. Certainly. So our Instagram page okay. is 
St. Andrew P.I.C. Okay. Very short. St. Andrew P.I.C. Yes. So when you get to our Instagram page, you can actually click to get to our Facebook page Mm -hmm. because our um, Facebook page name is a bit long. Mm -hmm. So we use the shortened Instagram page and it takes you over to Facebook. Just click on the bio. Right. And it takes you to our Facebook page page so okay. whatever we post on instagram we also post on facebook mm. so you don't miss anything because you know demographics are different yeah some people like facebook a lot of the younger generation they go to instagram instagram, and instagram you know it's a place to be yeah so it has all of the registration information let's talk about registration really quickly can you sure. give me a price range of what i'm looking at to purchase a t-shirt or a costume Right, so it ranges from one forty and it goes up to two hundred dollars. Okay, and remember, you have the option to revamp, mm-hmm. and the ones that are two hundred dollars, this is where you can get a costume mm-hmm. um, for some bands, and then you mm-hmm. can have your revamp right. costume, right? And then you have your lunch and your premium drinks. Mm-hmm. So, so this all comp- comprises of. The costume, the drinks, the food, yes, the entire the, experience. Yes, yes. Paint, yeah. the yeah. whistles, That's a real everything. good deal, though. It is. Yes, I'm telling you. That's fantastic. It yes, is. Mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. Okay. So all the information is there. How yeah. to register, where to register, who to register with. Mm-hmm. We have the bands on there, their costumes, some of the revamping styles as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. and some of the, uh, the actual sections have actual individual uh, Instagram okay. name handles. Okay. So you'll have at Turner's Hall Carnival at Sleeping Giant oh, Carnival. Oh, going all over. Yeah, we got going time, all over. Time. Yeah, so you can actually <laughs> go on Turner's Hallwood page or a Sleeping Giant page or a Picture Hole page mm. and you're going to see every single individual thing about that section. Even the Google link to register vir- um, virtually mm-hmm. or you can actually get a printed form that you can get emailed to you and you can fill out and then you can do deposit. They have the um, first pay, first pay option mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. in-cash Our option. Public workers option. option. Okay. So the different options that you can pay for wow. your uh, sign-up as well. This is lovely. Yeah, definitely. Yes, is. This is so lovely and I love that we are finding ways to bring back our community of um Bejana, what we call it. <laughs> you know, just Barbadian culture back together after a long break of what we had was, you know, the pandemic and everything. And we're finding safe ways to just come together, you know? Yes. More yes. peace and less war. Yes. And finding, you know, the sweetest escape, St. Mm-hmm. Andrew. Yeah, definitely. I love that. Yeah. The sweetest escape. The sweetest <laughs> escape. Ladies, this was so much fun. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we leave? Well, yes, to look out for our carnival road trips because what we do is that we go into the wider Barbados and we go to a community shop and we promote the carnival and some of the costumes. Like a mini cavalcade. Yes. Okay. That's definitely. Yes. We call the carnival parties our carnival road trips. Okay. You know. So go. in between this time of today is the 21st of October and mm-hmm. then it's going to take us at least another month to the carnival. Yes. We're going to be doing these little pop-up shops yes. to promote yes. Yes. the, the, the carnival. The costumes um, are also on show there, person will wear the costume, mm-hmm. put on a little jam show, you know, yes. show you what you get on the road, you know. So yeah, so at the carnival parties. That's mm-hmm. what you that's what you do. And mm-hmm. the carnival party that we're having this weekend on the 23rd, which is a Sunday, mm-hmm. it starts at nine. And this is where you will have all of the bands showcasing their costume and their performances. The Cabal launch. Yes. yes. Okay. But it's a carnival party. We carnival call it a carnival party. party. Okay. We could have had the launches, but this yes. is the big one where everyone will be there. Wow. Yes. That's exciting. Yes. It is. So it's gonna be a we're gonna have a good time mm-hmm. on Sunday, and then we're gonna do our road trips where we're gonna go to other um, businesses. Mm-hmm. So follow our um Instagram, Instagram page to Facebook. see where we're going. Because we are definitely going to be coming to a bar or a community shop near you. Near you yes. For Correct. sure. Correct. Ooh, Janelle, <laughs> Selena, y'all yes. are amazing. <laughs> Thank you, you for your energy. This was fantastic. I'm wishing the best for the carnival. Thank, Thank you so much. And I would love you to come back and tell us how it went, you what you're looking will. to do. And we want more sponsors. Yes, <laughs> yes we need sponsors. Come yes. on, bring that money. Well, you're sponsored before you go. Can you tell me who, who's your sponsors? Anybody, anybody, your family, your friends that support Supporting you, there's, the Parish Ambassadors Commission. Anybody? There's Bandy Farm Variety. Um, there is 
Well, we have quite a few sponsors. Yes. We have the, the Bay Lounge, who mm-hmm. is, you know, they're really, you Ooh, know, help. Bay Lounge. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We have um, the White Rabbit there. Yes. We're very instrumental in us coming there and okay. promoting the carnival. So a lot of Ignite. community shops. We have shops. Ignite as well, which right. is for your performers. They will also be on Long Pond oh, as well. Oh, yes. yeah. they're going to have a show down there. So okay. we, we, at, before the show climax says they're going to give you a fire performance. A fire performance. Yes. yes. So you got to see a whole 20 minute show. And we have there. a surprise. On Long Pond, what though? Yes, okay. yes. A surprise. Look for that surprise. I feel like a right. I want to thank them for having us. <laughs> uh-huh. I think there's so many names yeah. to call. Yeah, yeah there's Easy quite a few. SK, <laughs> Dave's Bar and Grill, Hidden Valley Bar. You know, and we're coming to other bars. So we just want to say thank you guys. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me talk to you guys. And you guys are fantastic. Wish you the best. Have a great St. Andrew Carnival and a fantastic independent season. And St. Andrew's Day. Thank you. St. Andrew's Day. Day. (laughs) Awesome. Thank Thank you you so much. much. You're welcome. Bazzity. Oh, so we're sliding into another podcast session. Well, another interview, another person. And it's also another creative person. And you know we love creatives over here. And in episode six, we're, we talked about the carnival. Now we're going to go into a little detail about musicians. And tonight we have Mart Ford. Hi, Mart. What's up? Hi. Good night. <laughs> Good night. And he is promoting his... Steel Pan show called My Island and Me. So, Mark, before we get into it, I just want you to tell me why Steel Pan? Why you chose Steel Pan? Do you play other instruments? If this is your favorite instrument, tell me why Steel Pan? Well, Steel Pan kind of just, I want to say it just stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Um, I did initially start on Steel Pan. Um, When I joined Cadets in first form, um, the Asked the recruits, well, anybody who to join the, the cadet band, I said, well, okay, me. Said, so do you play an instrument? No. So they I'm just... the cadet band. <laughs> this is Belen? Like um, No, this was actually just at Kamamira locally. Oh, oh Kamamira, okay. Yeah, so the mm-hmm. number three unit cadet band, mm-hmm. and I learned the snare drum there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even before that, I remember when I came to collect my books to enter first form, there was mm-hmm. a summer camp going on in the hall. Mm-hmm. When there was steel pan camp going on, and mm-hmm. I remember asking my father, "Wait, so you think this is something I could join?" Mm-hmm. And he said, "Well, if it did, you are join Galang. Galang. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, one day at assembly, they said, "Well, the steel band is we can be having a meeting at lunch. Any interested persons can come along." Mm-hmm. So I went to the meeting. Um, it went on from there. I ended up the next year being one of the same campers in the hall, mm-hmm. and it grew from there. I went on to become a member of the Barbados National Youth Steel Orchestra mm-hmm. uh, when it originally started. Um, currently, I'm the deputy director for the orchestra. Okay. I think, yeah. don't tell me, Lori. Correct. Is the, the director. Yeah. So I'm music teacher at Foundation. Well, it was kind of-ish, yeah, when I went to Foundation. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Lori. Yeah. Yeah, Lori. <laughs> and Lori is also one of the featured artists um, okay. at My Island and Me. That's interesting. He's also mm-hmm. featured on the album. Mm-hmm. So all of our featured artists at the show are actually persons who would have played at the album as well. Okay, so you started at Kamamir, then you moved up into the Steel Band Orchestra, then you went to BCC? Yeah, I went to BCC. Um, I would have studied there. Uh, I was the two-year program. Mm-hmm. Went on to teach for a year or two. Um, at BCC? No, at I started off, um, I did 8C, mm-hmm. a couple private places, and then Grantley Adams. Mm-hmm. Then I got a contract. I went to perform in Qatar on a four-month contract. Oh, wow. And then That's from a Spanish there, country? No, nah, Qatar is in the Middle East, like just below Iran. Oh, the UAE. Yeah, well, it's not really in the UAE, but mm-hmm. that kind of general that general area. Oh, before we go on, <laughs> I want to know more about that. Oh, yeah. how did that happen? Yeah, that happened actually. I will say by chance, mm-hmm. but not really by chance. Mm-hmm. The agent who provides a lot of the entertainment for a lot of the hotels and venues out in that area mm-hmm. happens to be a guy called Scott, who used to live in Barbados, an mm-hmm. Australian guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so his business eventually took root. It's no based, well, not no based, but at the time he was based in the Middle East. And mm-hmm. whenever he wanted 
steel pan or Caribbean theme based music, whenever that was requested, he would always go back to his Barbadian contacts. Oh, so the wow. pan player that he norm that he would have called at first was actually Andre Ford, who yeah, was Andre. one of my tutors at BCC. Okay. Um, he didn't want to stop what he was doing here to go away on a four month contract. Okay. So he How recommended was that experience me. Experience for you. It was it was cool, but it was different. Hmm. Right. Um, the culture was different. The way um I guess the way that the industry out there was set up. Mm -hmm. Because under my contract, it wasn't a case where I have to hustle my own gigs. Mm -hmm. It is specifically, well, we're hiring you to play at this specific venue. Okay. For these people, here is your salary. Um, you will not perform anywhere else oh. outside of your contract. Okay. Right. So it was very different from what it would be a custom here where you're essentially trying to get more work. Okay. Right. Oh, there it is. No, you are contracted for here mm. and you will go there. And the, the agency sorted out like the visas, that kind of stuff. Mm. Right. It was also really interesting to perform for people who had never seen or heard the instrument. Mm-hmm. So, still fine. Yeah, yeah. So they and were, it's very synonymous to the Caribbean. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So I recall there are actually times where persons would come and like look under the pan, like, where does it plug in? <laughs> How does it make a sound? And, oh, that's so cute. Yeah. And they were ask, so where are you from? Mm. Um, I'm from Barbados. Okay, so where is Belarus? Oh. Yeah, they <laughs> never heard of it. Yeah. Right, so I remember showing a guy like on Google Earth, okay, so this is Barbados. Mm -hmm. And it's spin the globe uh, a couple mm -hmm. times all right and here is qatar it's like, okay so like how you get here like, how <laughs> right like how this even happened right. right that's amazing well so how did that experience propel you to you know i don't know if you teach now or what what advice or what experiences you got out of that in qatar so where you were now okay I think one of the things that I learned there was there is a demand and not only from there, but from other experiences traveling as well. I think there is a demand outside of Barbados mm -hmm. for what we offer. Mm -hmm. And we oftentimes don't appreciate the demand that is there for our culture, wow. for our music, that for our art, for our entertainment. I love that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. even um earlier this year, I would have went to Dubai as well for Expo, mm -hmm. right? And it was drilled home in my head again, like there are people outside of Barbados and outside of the Caribbean who really appreciate what we do, who really like our music, who as much as you might not be, I will use the word, or you might not be a big name here, but they hear it and they like it, mm -hmm. right? Like that's their culture. They hear it, they like it, whether they know of you or not. Mm -hmm. right? So I, something as that may seem simple to us might be very exotic or creative or different for them. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So even like, I guess it was just encouragement to not stifle myself, mm. right? Do not stifle myself here. Um, you, there, there's always a mentality that we may have. We might think, okay, well, within 166 square miles, there's only room for these people. Mm -hmm. But the world is bigger than that. And mm -hmm. there's a bigger demand than Barbados, mm -hmm. right? Even in Barbados, even sometimes we, we, we sometimes don't think of where can I fit into the space? Yes, especially as artists. Yeah. For sure. So that was one of the things that I really took away from that. Oh, that's inspirational. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about My Island and Me. Why the title and where you want to take it? Is it going to be a big event, a small intimate concert? Tell us a little bit about the promotion for your, your launch, your album launch. Okay, so the name of the album, My Island and Me, it really came about because, um, first of all, well, big up to NCF um, during the pandemic they would have offered a grant mm -hmm. to artists who were looking to create who were looking to put out content and weren't necessarily getting the avenues to make the revenue for it because events shut down there mm -hmm. was nothing much happening entertainment wise mm -hmm. so i was a recipient of that grant mm -hmm. right so big up to them for that initiative mm -hmm. and pretty much when the idea was put to me to apply for the grant 
the part of part of it was that you had to have a video element. Yeah. So I, I did speak I, I to. Think I was a part of that too, so I know how it is. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I spoke to my videographer, the guy who I would always go to for advice with video, mm-hmm. the same Andre Ford, mm-hmm. my pan tutor. Okay. Right? And, um, and ultra lens photography. Yeah. And he gave me an idea. Well, why not? Because I had already started recording the album on my own mm-hmm. without the NCF help. Mm-hmm. So he was like, so why not just rebrand your album in such a way that is now something that perhaps they can use and they can market. Mm-hmm. So... For the video, I did a remake, pretty much, of Beautiful Barbados in a more modern style featuring Imani. I saw Um, that. Okay. So I decided I would go with something memorable from that song. So there's the last song, Come Back to My Island and Me. And I say, My Island and Me, it sounds like a title that we could stick with, that I can go with, not necessarily just a take it off of the Mary Men. Mm-hmm. But it's a title that could resonate. Um, you pay homage to more or less one of the most recognizable Barbadian songs. Mm-hmm. The album would have had my content as well as content featuring other Barbadian artists. Mm-hmm. Um, the album artwork, pretty much, it looks Bajan, mm-hmm. Barbadasy. Mm-hmm. Right? Barbadasy. <laughs> Barbadasy, right? <laughs> the album artwork looks the part and it was like yeah we can do this Mm -hmm. this is something that i feel comfortable promoting this is something that i think if ncf decides to fund it they can get behind Mm -hmm. this is something that i could market even outside of barbados Mm -hmm. this is something i can push this is something i could push not only outside but here because we are patriotic people as well so i went with that theme of or yeah, let's push the agenda. Just push. Beijing. And then when I think about the title for me, when I when I hear my island and me, and what you just spoke about is like you are taking your island in your suitcase, like my island and me, and taking the culture that you know and taking it to Qatar and Dubai and 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 spreading the awareness of our sweet sweet culture, you know, in music. So I think that's beautiful. Can you tell me how many um songs are on the on the track? Um, there are currently 10 songs on the album. And what inspired you for each song? Like, what type of energy is it? Is it a really, like, Barbadiana, Barbadian music? Is it slow and mellow? Where would I hear this type of music? Everywhere. I went for... I went to capture the widest cross-section, mm-hmm. cross-section that I could in my mind. So there's mellow songs. Um, there's... My mellowest song, I think, um, a song called Silver Sands mm-hmm. featuring Lori, Lori Leon. Yeah. Um, the up tempo, beautiful Barbados. I, I really didn't want to do it the same way the Mary Men did. I made it a bit more upbeat. Mm-hmm. There's also a song featuring DJ Simmons. Okay. Very up tempo. Yeah. Um, there's a it's song a I did called. Poetry kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So he has the spoken word element in there alongside yeah. the pan. Right. And then he also did a song called Is a Vibe, which I used to play with a rhythm section group, an engine room called Is a Vibe. Vibe. Mm-hmm. So my, my time at the time was like, well, I really want to have this featuring a lot of drums, mm-hmm. a lot of percussion. percussion. Mm-hmm. And. One of the producers that was helping me, my recording engineer, big up, Chris Allman at Slam City Studios. Mm -hmm. Chris was like, well, let me try like an Afro beats. Mm -hmm. I want to experiment with Afro beats. I was like, well, let me try that that, because I want want playing drums. Yeah. Right? (laughs) So. So you had like drumming in in that one or that was just on a drum drum machine? uh, Well. How that one was created? All of it, all, the whole album has live drum playing. Mm -hmm. But because of the way that I record. Mm -hmm. In my setup at home, I have an electronic drum kit. Mm-hmm. So there is the elect. There's a live playing, mm-hmm. but it's using electronic kit. Mm-hmm. So it still gives a it still gives a bit of that Cross element. Section of both live and yeah. Okay. Nice, I love it. Sounds good. Um, so when we go to the album launch, tell us a little bit about where it's gonna be, what time, how should I dress? You know, what's the why are we? How are we gonna? receive your album launch okay the album launch is going to be on november 5th mm-hmm. starting at 7 p.m at the daphne joseph hackett theater okay that's in queen's park that is in queen's park mm-hmm. correct right so we have a full show planned 
first half intermission second oh, half okay you right? got the whole thing going yeah okay, they say the, the PE show <laughs> <right>? <laughs> like that we begin with intermission to yeah, break like yeah. more coming yeah more right mm-hmm. so I'm gonna be playing there's the live band DJ Simmons will be there performing Lori Leon will be there performing Imani will be there performing Kwe Kujalani mm-hmm. who's also featured on the album will be there performing Fantastic Trumpeters Trumpeters? Trumpeter Trumpeter I think Oops Yeah Trumpeter <laughs> Fantastic Trumpeter There yeah. is say one of the best in the island in the, world. the Caribbean the world Yes Right No one does it like Kwe Ku mm-hmm. Right And he sings along with it Right yes. So you're gonna get all of that There's also gonna be a special guest act that I'm not I'm, I'm not putting out there just Ooh, yet. Oh, you're tantalizing us. Yeah, okay. there's a special guest act that we haven't announced just yet. Mm-hmm. Right? But it's in the works. We we did, we ready. Mm-hmm. Um, what time does it start? We start at 7 p.m. And what's the cost to get in? The cost to get in is we have we currently have like three packages actually. Oh, okay. So it's top tier, first tier, tier one, tier two. No. Okay. Not really tier level, mm-hmm. but what do you want? So we have oh. event. You can also buy the album and we have merch. We have t-shirts and oh, whatnot. Okay. So it's fancy. Yeah, right? I like it. So you can get your ticket, your album, and a t-shirt mm-hmm. at 120. Oh, that's smart. That's yeah. Great marketing. Or you can get the ticket and the album at $90. What? Or if for now you decide, well, you just want to attend the launch and when you enjoy it, then you will buy other stuff. You can just get your ticket for now at 50. Okay. That's a fantastic idea. That's And it feels easy because then you buy the shirt, you feel a part of it, you have, you leave with, you experience it, you leave with it in your hand, my island and me in my hand. And Correct. then... I, you could play it in the car when you're going home after you just experience it on the C- in CD, right? Yeah, we have a CD. We have download cards. Okay. So once you get this card, there's actually a code that you can put in because we acknowledge that it's 2022. I mean, technology. And yeah. your laptop probably does not have a CD drive, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, many persons are going to be playing, as you say, on the, in the car going home. Mm-hmm. Right? It's also going to be available on Spotify, on Apple Music. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be available everywhere. Yes. Wherever, or wherever digital music exists. Okay, technology. <laughs> you're going to be able to find it. Yeah. But for those who like their physical copies, we do have download cards that you can also keep as mm-hmm. memorandum. We do have CDs. Um, we have everything. You could come. You could m- more or less. You could order now. You can go on. You can check my Instagram at Mark the Pan Man, mm-hmm. D E Mark the Pan Man, and you can click the link in the bio. You can order your ticket. You can order your shirt. You can you can go to the event with your shirt already on. Okay, right? <laughs> I like that. Right? You're gonna be able to get all of your stuff beforehand. Mm-hmm. Right, so. We quite plan out. I know we were talking before we started our um, interview, but you said that you wanted to promote more local instrumental artists in the arena. Yeah. And we were diving a little bit more into detail with that. Being a dancer from the hotel, I only see a lot of percussionists and steel plant players in the hotel e- arena. You said, well, eh, you know, hotels, but you really want to put jazz music back out there, the, the um, percussion music back out there, um, yeah. steel plan music. How, what was the aim or the view for that in the next few years or months? Like, what? how are you going to go about that? All right, well, my aim for this is, well, this particular event stems more or less from launching the album. Mm-hmm. But realistically, I'm not going to be putting out an album every year. Mm. But once this event goes well, there's always the possibility the room to do something next year Mm -hmm. maybe not next year for independence Mm -hmm. but next year for a different event Mm -hmm. right um one of the things that i think we could possibly look into is doing more events number one outside of crop over Mm -hmm. right i think that we more or less we we spend a lot of time capitalizing on crop over which is good Mm -hmm. but then after august 
they got more months. <laughs> and when the new year starts, mm-hmm. there are more months before crop over yeah. comes back. We literally just said that in the, in the other ladies that spoke about the carnival. Yeah. And they were saying that it's lovely to build community outside of a season. Yeah. And, you know, we realized we went through COVID. We were all separated. And outside of bringing tourists to our home, we still have to have this form of community, camaraderie, and be gentle soul and love with each, within each other. Correct. And I think that this is a fantastic idea to always have um, concerts and music and carnival all through the year. So our culture becomes potent and rich. And I Correct. think that's fan- a fantastic idea you're doing. Thank you. Because mm-hmm. I think one of the things as well is um as much as we do is not just putting on more events but more a, a greater diversity of events mm-hmm. so this particular event yes it does have singing mm-hmm. we are gonna have the singers there imani is gonna sing her lungs out I know. but then She's i'm amazing. also doing steel pan lori's a keyboardist mm-hmm. Kweku is a trumpeter. Mm-hmm. There is more than, more than just soca music, more than just the island tunes. Mm-hmm. Um, there is so much that Barbadian artists and Barbadian creatives have to offer mm-hmm. that we often don't tap into. Outside of the season. Yeah, outside yeah. of the seasonal stuff. Mm-hmm. And even in the season, we focus a lot on just performing. A, a, a particular, and performing a particular genre. Yes. Right? yes. I know it does. <laughs> like, I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think there's just so much more that we can do. Mm -hmm. And that's where I see this going. Mm -hmm. That even when they don't have a new CD to promote, there's always more stuff that can happen. Mm -hmm. There's always more spaces that can be created for creating. And you build capital all year round as a musician. (laughs) Yes, I get you. Yeah, so it's also kind of create that space, not only that we can perform more, Mm -hmm. but I'm also looking to create a space where I've promoted that, well, I'm going to have my merch on sale. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have my CDs on sale. Mm-hmm. But I know that last year, Lori put out his album as well. Mm-hmm. So why can't he sell his album in this space as well? Mm-hmm. Kweku also r- releases original music. Mm-hmm. Why can't he promote his stuff in this space as well? Mm-hmm. So I think we also have to get within the the whole thing of encouraging our artists to carry their art with them where they go, mm-hmm. to get it more marketable, to get it out there, yeah. to keep pushing. Ooh, so I love it. I'm trying to get this event to be, yes, yeah, my album launch, but the entire show can't just be me. Yeah, right? it's hosting other creatives. Yeah, like I purposely decided I'm going to platform other persons who I know have been putting out mm-hmm. so that they can sell their stuff as well i love this so to wrap up mark um what do you want us to take away from the show Mm. and from your art if we go on your instagram page if we see you in person if we just pass you and see you playing what do you want us to take away from your art well your first part really well let me ask you the second question first what do we want you to take away from my art um I guess most of the time your art is always going to have a message, even if it's not a message really and truly that you originally wrote. Sometimes we do covers, Mm -hmm. Um, especially as a steel pan player. I don't use lyrics, so I I tend to rely on what another person has already sung to try to reinterpret. Mm -hmm. Right. So I guess that is one of the things that drives the art for me, the ability to play over this song in my own voice, Mm -hmm. the ability to try to tell my story Mm -hmm. on my instrument without probably without using words, Mm -hmm. using all the other musical elements. I know, I dance. I can tell you. Right? (laughs) Yeah, you dance. You you understand it. Yeah. Right? So that's really something that I aim for. Mm -hmm. And when you come to the show, what I really want for you to leave with, apart from a copy of the album and a Mm t-shirt, is that that sense of like purposely the album has been recorded over a year ago, Mm. but I didn't want to more or less try to do a launch with the venue only able to hold 50% capacity Mm -hmm. due to protocols. Mm -hmm. Or I didn't want to do it 
as soon as protocols were lifted. I, I purposely said, nah, again, wait for the, I'm gonna wait for the first weekend in November, <laughs> right? And kickstart this independence thing. I so I really my aim is that by the time you leave Queen's Park at 9 p.m. on Saturday, we begin at seven, we're gonna end by nine, mm-hmm. two hour show. Mm-hmm. By the time you leave Daphne Joseph Hackett Theater. I want you to be ready for independence. Like, I want you, I want you to be like, yeah, I'm ready for the rest of the month. Mm. Right? And again, put on my Island Army t-shirt for the rest of the month. Oh right? <laughs> I've bought 30 of them, man. <laughs> right? I really, that's where I really want to push. I want to push, all right. Beige and soul. Yeah, right now this beige and soul, right? Mm. I want that you come, you hear what we have to offer. And the same way that many of our artists are able to travel and inspire such awe from other crowds. That's very really, that's what I really want to leave with the persons who go to Daphne Joseph Hackett Theatre that night. Mm-hmm. An appreciation for what we do, for what we have, mm-hmm. and that we could carry it further. Mm, so good. So so good. Thank you so much. And you know what I gather from that? That music is a compass to the soul. And I love it. I love it so much. This is fantastic. Congratulations on your album launch. And Thank I you. hope it's good. I hope you come back and tell us more on how it went. And even if we have more events, always come back and let us know more. So thank you so much. And I wish you nothing but the best. Well, thank you. And thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Basody. Thank you for listening to our podcast. This episode was recorded and produced by Robbie at Nameless Production.